Should I sit like an actor like this? You know, kind of like. Or just like, what did you mean by that question? And then you got you to get the foot in there. Well, I thought about acting when I was a child. And, um, oh my God, let me tell you this one story. Spike. <laughs> Uh, my name is Michael Blakely, and I play Mike in Izzy's Christmas. Um, what was your connection with this story? Why did you choose to be a part of this project? I think I chose to be a part of the project because um, I thought it'd be interesting to play a dad, and also just for like for reading the script, it had like this like really like heartfelt like tone to it, and. Um, just seeing, cause like we see on like TV all the time, like how like moms, you know, have troubles with their, you know, with the baby daddy or whatever. But I thought it was interesting to see like the other side of it now, like a father is kind of like, if he has custody, or, you know, he primarily has a kid, like how does he interact with the kid? You know, what are some of the struggles that he goes through, you know, with working and having a kid and also trying to go back and forth, you know, through the court system. So I thought that would be, uh, I thought that playing Mike would be an interesting thing to do. And we both have the same name. I think the difference this time is the first time I played Mike, um, it was more me getting to know him, you know, and trying to find that happy medium, like, you know, who is Mike the dad, you know, to Isaria. And also, you know, going back and forth with the, you know, with the mom. So the first one to me, it felt very uh, businessy especially with that like business scene with me trying to like, you know, move up the chain. But this one, I feel like it was more um, intimate. You know, I feel like I spent a lot more time uh, with Izzy or a lot more time my conversations revolved more around my daughter versus, you know, I'm jumping from here to here. I mean, obviously, you know, we're adults and we have like business things to do. But this time I felt like it was the focus was more on my relationship with my daughter versus my relationship with the world. Um, if someone hasn't seen the short film, what would you tell them? I would tell them to watch it. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would definitely tell them. Um, so I heard this quote once. I'm not sure where it's from. Um, I think it was from like a famous acting teacher. I think her name was uh, Yuta Hagen. I think that's her. I, I just heard it somewhere. Anyways, it said that um, good theater changes the world, way that you look at the world, but great theater changes you. So, and I've also just learned from like being in college and stuff like that, that um, Whatever like you're taking part in, like for like theater wise or even film, you're speaking to somebody. So there could be a message. There's a message in any type of media that has like a positive or negative message for whoever's like taking part in it. So I feel like if there is like a dad out there, you know, that has gone through like some of the same issues as that Mike has gone through, you know, uh, obviously real life issues with you know between mothers and fathers of a child are more dramatic. But I feel like somebody could take a look at this and say, wow, I've been through that. You know, or I know somebody who's been through that. Uh, I know somebody who's a great dad, but is struggling with this. I know somebody who is a mother and wants to be there more for their child, but um, still has like some grown to do herself. I feel like somebody will see themselves in these characters or even like there might be like a, a kid or a child, you know, some like a younger person that watches this is like, wow, like, that was my parents. You know, I I remember going to court and being there with a um, with a social worker, you know, and how awkward that was for me. You know, so I feel like some anybody who's been in this type of situation can look at this and reflect on it, and uh, just take solace in like knowing that like whatever bad times they went through are over, or even if they are going through bad times, you know, they can watch this and see moments of joy or happiness, you know, and be like, okay, you know, everything's not that bad. No, I don't. Where did you, how did you, you're, you're someone's dad, and you've actually been mistaken a few times where you had the kid. Where did you trigger or channel that? 
So uh, my entire life, people have told me I have like dad energy, which is really weird. Even when I was a kid, I remember one time I was at a family member's house and um, you know, like little kids just running around or whatever. But it was this one kid that was just like running around, kind of like going to like toward the street and like all the adults, it seemed like they were ignoring him. You know, nothing against my family, you know, but <clears throat> I was like babysitting this kid the whole time. You know, and all the adults were like, oh my God, that's so cute. You know, he's like, a, you know, he's like fathering like this kid or whatever. And I'm just like, I don't even know this kid. I just don't want him to get hurt. You know, and I have younger siblings too. So, you know, just babysitting and stuff like that. And also like, you know, I didn't have a dad growing up. You know, my dad died from sickle cell anemia when I was four years old. And um, I just always kind of like looked my entire life for my dad and other people. And um, I've also tried to look at father figures, you know, from anywhere I can find him, find them and like see what qualities they had and would want to emulate them to my future children. So I think that's it. My favorite Christmas tradition. So favorite Christmas tradition is getting all the decorations out and you know just setting up the tree um, it used to be when I was younger we would take the tree out of the, out of the crawl space and like go hang it up um, and then like my mom was like okay we gotta like let it sit and I'm just like so antsy like oh, I want to put the decorations on the tree please so the next we put everything on the tree and also just uh, being in the car with my mom like listening to like you know Christmas songs on the radio uh, watching 25 Days of Christmas, watching um, The Year Without a Santa Claus, watching, uh, what is it, uh, Rudolph, obviously. Um, there's this other one. Like, they call me heat miser wherever I go. I think that's The Year Without a Santa Claus. I think that's The Year Without a Santa Claus. But, uh, but yeah, just like getting into the whole like Christmas theme. Like, and my mom, she used to have, so when I was little, my mom used to always have parties for stuff. It was a Halloween party, you know, Valentine's Day party, and Christmas party. And I remember Christmas was just always the time of year. It gave me like this warm feeling when family would just all get together. So even though like, you know, you get older and family starts to, you know, go away, fade apart. Uh, the month of December is definitely like, like a, a heartwarming time in my life. So uh, thank you for having me. Hey, don't forget to check out Mike and Itchy's Christmas on all streaming platforms or wherever you can watch it. Ha, ha, ha.